Hey everyone, Tactics here with my 8th and final Mythic Plus Guide of Season 2, going over what is likely to be the scariest dungeon at least at the start of the season and on PTR, Halls of Infusion. In this video I'll be covering everything you need to know about the dungeon including important interrupts, boss and trash abilities, and even a pug friendly route at the end to help you at the beginning of the season which will be linked down in the description below if you want to grab that MDT string. If you're looking for something a bit more in depth, I'm going to be putting out advanced routing guides for all eight of these dungeons over the next couple weeks, so make sure you do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when those get posted. Otherwise, before getting into the trash, let's start by talking about the engineering buff and run back skip, which are both located in the large circular chamber that you start near, but on opposite sides of the room. Entering the chamber if you go left, so on the north side, you'll find a limited immortality device which engineering players can interact with to gain the limited immortality buff and this also applies to allies within 40 yards and this will just prevent a single death for each player for 60 minutes, so very very powerful buff here. On the opposite side of this room, on the right when you come into it, or on the south side, you'll find maybe the worst shortcut run back of all time, where the green dot here on this map is where you would go if you want to skip to the second boss, and the teal dot is where you would go if you want to skip to the last boss, only opened up after you uh, defeat the second and third boss respectively. Even when you're using these skips though, it takes minutes to run back not to mention that you'd have to fight some more difficult trash packs on this side of the room to actually clear up to this skip so at least currently i'd say that the shortcut is definitely a bait not worth the time to clear to now that done let's talk about the trash in this area which has received a ton of changes since people last did this dungeon in mythic zero at the beginning of the expansion primalist ravagers only have a single ability now in tailwind this actually isn't even an ability it's just a buff on themselves 20 percent attack and move speed increase to them and allies within 15 yards so they'll be buffing up packs that they're in Primalist Geomancers now only have a single ability in Seismic Slam. This is stoppable or you can just avoid it as they'll leap to a random target and deal damage within a 5 yard area. So you can just avoid that as well as stopping it too. Containment Apparatus are quite annoying. Their Containment Beam is a 3 second random target channel and you'll also be slowed for 30% over the duration of this channel. And this is spammable so even if you stop it they'll just begin casting again on someone else. So pretty annoying here. But they do have a very very important interrupt in Expulse. You can interrupt or stop this ability or even LOS it with the nearby walls and corners and stuff like that. Basically just a very very scary 60 yard AoE hit on your party so make sure this either doesn't go off or you're LOSing it. Refty Defenders are in this area. They have another important kick or stop in Demoralizing Shout. This is a stackable 60 yard AoE 8 second long 25% damage done reduction to the entire party here. So you really really want to make sure this doesn't go off. I know these guys tend to insta catch this on entering combat for some reason so be aware of that. They also have a frontal attack in Spear Flurry targeting the tank. The range on this is quite short though, so even the tank can step back and out of it. It will apply Gushing Wound to anyone hit as well. This is a bleed dot that's pretty nasty, so everyone just be aware of these frontals. Even the tank, make sure you don't get hit by that dot. Once you clear through this massive first chamber, you'll find yourself in Watcher Iridius's room, which is a two-phase boss encounter. In the first phase, you're fighting the boss, who has a pretty heavy party hit in Static Surge. This deals pulsing damage every two seconds for six seconds. On its own, not too scary, but when combined with the power overload debuff, it can cause some issues. This debuff is a magic dot that goes out on three random players. It deals ticking damage every second for six seconds, and then on expiration or removal, it leaves behind a power field on the ground that deals ticking damage to players inside of it. On top of this, you'll need to be dodging sparks occasionally as the boss will shoot out volleys of four yard swirlies at players, dealing a big hit of arcane damage and putting a 10 second dot on any one hit, so make sure to avoid them. Besides that, the boss just has a frontal ability in Titanic Fist, which targets the tank but does not follow them, and will damage and knock down anyone hit, so everyone including the tank wants to make sure they sidestep or just aren't in front of the boss. Every so often, Aridius will run to the center of the room, apply three stacks of Ablative Barrier to himself, and gain a 99% DR, then he'll channel Siphon Power. This will give the boss a stacking 2% nature damage and power field radius increase each second while the barrier holds. 
To break this barrier, you need to hit the boss with three nullification pulses to remove his three shield stacks. And these are just 12 yard AOEs that happen when you kill any of the four nullification devices that spawn during this phase. So the play here, group up these mobs quickly underneath the boss and burst them down as fast as you can. Note that when you remove a stack of the barrier, the boss will shoot out several reactive spark swirlies that you just want to avoid. In the meantime, the devices do spam purifying blast at random targets. It's just random arcane damage that applies also a stacking dot, so it's another reason you want to get out of this phase quickly. From there, the fight repeats, though of course the boss has the nature damage and field radius increase going into all of the boss phases from now on. So be aware, not only will things be more dangerous, but you'll have to be running more in order to escape those larger power fields. Moving towards the next boss here, there are some infused mushrooms if you choose to go down the left path, but there's also some near the gulping goliath as well. This is yet another profession item where this one can be used by herbalists and will buff all allies within 40 yards with the cleansing spores buff for 30 minutes. This automatically clears a single poison or disease effect on them every 15 seconds for the duration. It's going to be pretty helpful in the next area here, especially if you don't have a poison to spell in your group, as there are a ton of curious swaglet mobs. These guys just have a gulp swag toxin that will be applied via their melee attacks as a stacking 18 second poison dot, and it will instantly kill the player at 10 stacks. These mobs also can't be tanked. They randomly fixate people, so that's why this can get out of hand quickly, and it's good to have poison dispels either in your group or to have this mushroom buff. These guys are often joined by dazzling dragonflies. These mobs have a very important cast in dazzle, interruptible or stoppable. It's a tank targeted arcane frontal attack, which has a three second disorient attached to it. So if it hits the tank at any time, you're in big trouble because the entire pack is going to go to someone else because of that disorient. This does not follow the tank, so you can just sidestep it. But again, ideally interrupt or stop. Just make sure it does not go off. Dragonflies also have the Evasive Flutter Self buff. It's just a 6 second long buff that gives them 25% dodge. Nothing really crazy about that. An important kickable mob in this area are the Primalist Shock Troopers. These guys have an Elemental Focus cast, Interruptible or Stoppable here. It's also a 30 second long magic buff, so it can be purged. And what this does is it transforms their regular damage hit, which is Lightning Blast, into Infused Lightning. Now, Lightning Blast is just a relatively not dangerous instant cast nature hit on a random target but infused lightning is a very very dangerous also instant cast random target hit because it also jumps to other players so these guys will passively be doing lightning blast elemental focus goes off though that turns into a fused lightning and that is very dangerous very quickly for your entire party so make sure they never get that buff or it's purged off asap along with them are some stealth mobs and skulking zealots Instantly upon coming out of stealth, they'll cheap shot someone. So you want to make sure you try and break them out of stealth before they come out of stealth cheap shotting because that's a three second stun, usually on your tank if they're the first person there, which can kind of suck. Outside of that, they have a self buff in a rising squall. This is a stacking 4% attack speed buff for every successful melee. It lasts six seconds, so it can stack up quite high if they continuously get melees off on the tank. So be aware of that buff. There are two mini bosses in this area. Squallbringer Sraz and Flamecaller Amy. Sraz is pretty straightforward. He'll do Whirling Fury, which is just a three second, eight yard channeled physical AoE around himself. So step out of that. And then he has Zephyr's Call, which will just summon some Zephyrling adds, which are pretty basic. They don't really do anything. So just pick them up. Amy has an interrupt you want to keep on top of in Pyretic Burst. This is a fire dot and hit on the tank here pretty nasty so make sure you keep that kick because there's nothing else really to kick besides her cauterize which she'll cast at around 40 percent hp and then whenever it's off cooldown from there it's a 33 percent heal so that's really really important to kick but basically you're kicking stuff anyways so just have a kick rotation on her easy to get all of them no problem Outside of that, she has a combo in Molten Subduction followed by Magma Crash. This is basically a random target magic route that goes on a player. And then following that, there's a big swirly that will one-shot anyone inside of it that goes off after a short delay. So that player needs to either get dispelled or break their own route to get out of that Magma Crush AoE. Once you get past the two mini bosses, you'll be faced with the Gulping Goliath, who is a pretty simple boss here. The main mechanic is Overpowering Croak. This deals ticking physical damage to the entire party causes lethal six yard AOE cave-in swirlies to appear all over the place. You need to dodge and then also spawns in some of those swaglet ads from before. Again, fixating random players, applying gulp swag toxin to them on their autos. 
while you can choose to cleave these frogs down something you can also do is actually kite them into the boss's gulp cast this is a 10 yard aoe around the boss eats any players or frogs inside of it after two seconds and this will instantly kill frogs and then it'll apply a two second nature dot plus three stacks of the swag toxin to any players hit Note though, if no players are hit, the boss will become angry, getting a 50% stacking physical damage increase for one minute. So you want to make sure one player, likely your tank in most cases, stands inside the circle whenever it goes out. Outside of these mechanics, there's some additional party damage in Toxic Effluvia. Hopefully I'm saying that right. This deals nature damage to all players every two seconds for four seconds. And then there's another Swirly Dodge in Belly Slam. This just causes the boss to leap towards a random player and deal lethal damage to anyone within 12 yards of the impact. Moving down the hallway here, you'll find a pretty dangerous lieutenant mob in the Glacial Proto Dragon. The one main dangerous ability is Deep Chill. This is a 50 yard AoE frost hit that has a 12 second magic dot attached to it and it also has a 30% slow on that dot. It hits hard. It ticks hard. It's very dangerous. You can LOS it. However, in this hallway, it's kind of hard. But later on in the dungeon, uh, before the last boss, you can actually use some of the terrain to LOS this cast. But otherwise, defensives, big heals, those kinds of things here to survive it. You also have a tank targeted channeled frontal and oceanic breath. This cannot be dodged. It does follow the tank. So make sure that these mobs are pointed away and tanks pop a defensive here because it is a pretty heavy damage time if you have the deep chill buff, especially because that's just a lot of magic damage going out on you. Primalist Ice Callers are also in this area. They have a Frost Tank Hit and Ice Shard. Not kickable, but it is stoppable. More importantly though, they have Refreshing Tide. This is an AoE 30% heal to mobs within 25 yards, so you really want to make sure this is stopped. Again, not kickable, but make sure it gets stopped. Joining them in this area are Primalist Earthshakers. These guys have a single ability, no cast time, just a Rumbling Earth AoE. 8 yards that drops underneath the mob. This will deal AoE damage, uh, nature damage, sorry, and it will stun anyone for two seconds if you're hit. So you just need to move the pack out of these brown circles that spawn. The last primalist mob in this area are the Gale Singers. These are the kick mobs. They have Wind Buffet. This is a kick or a stop here, random target nature damage. So make sure those don't go off. And they have another AoE that is instant cast, similar to the Rumbling Earth, but this one is called Thunderstorm. And this goes on a random player. It seemed to prioritize targeting ranged, but who knows, really. And this just deals ticking damage and does slowly move as well. So you need to get out of this and stay away from these circles. After you clear through this hallway, you'll be able to engage the third boss, Kajin the Undying, and you'll notice spread throughout this boss room are several ice boulders. If you look closely, you'll actually see there are two different types. There's whole boulders and there's cracked ones. When hit by an ability, boulders will be brought down a level, so whole boulders become cracked, and crack boulders explode in an avalanche of ice, dealing heavy frost damage to players within 12 yards. The key ability you want to avoid here is Hailstorm. This is a 7 second long cast that will deal lethal frost damage to anyone not hiding behind an ice boulder, hitting those boulders in the process. Because of this, you want to make sure that you're hiding behind a whole boulder, not a cracked one, otherwise you'll get hit by the nasty avalanche explosion that we just talked about. Between Hailstorm casts, there's a couple of other abilities to worry about, the first being Glacial Surge, which creates a series of ice rings that explode, starting with directly under the boss and shifting outward, similar to Kurog from both of the Incarnates. So make sure you're dodging these. This cast also leaves behind several new ice boulders, so you're never worried about running out. Kajin will also aim a Frost Cyclone at a random player, shoots a line towards them after a few seconds, which deals very big frost damage and knocks back anyone hit. This will also damage any boulders that it contacts, so try and aim this into open space or just into boulders that are really far away that you have no plans to use. In addition to all of these abilities, there's just constant ticking damage happening the entire fight from Polar Winds, which is a pretty nasty on the PTR in terms of the overall damage output, so your healer is definitely going to be busy. On top of this, there's also an instant cast tank hit in Frost Shock, which is moderate frost damage and applies a 6 second magic debuff that slows you by 50%. Just be aware of this damage spike. After defeating Kajin, all that's standing between you and the final boss is a trash gauntlet filled with a few familiar mobs and a couple new ones as well. But an important thing to note here is that the crashing tsunami waves that are appearing will constantly be shooting across a little over half of this platform as you work your way through it. And these will deal a big hit of frost damage and knock you back if you're hit. Some of the other abilities in these trash pulls, this extra damage can be quite scary and easily result in a death. So make sure you're avoiding them. 
terms of what those mobs are. The relatively not scary mobs are the Aqua Ragers. These guys have a few interruptible and stoppable casts. The first is Boiling Rage. It's just a 50% self damage increase. And as it sounds, it's an enrage, so you can just uh, soothe it off of them. Finally, at 20% HP, they'll cast Tidal Divergence, and if successful, they'll split themselves into four Aqualing mobs. So you want to make sure you kick or stop this, because these Aqualings basically will just spam cast Water Bolt, an interruptible spell, at the tank. Kind of annoying. It's not super dangerous, at least on, you know, mid-level keys, but potentially on higher keys, it could be very, very dangerous. And it's just more kicks that you need to deal with, which is not ideal. Finally, at the end of the gauntlet is Infuser Soraya. She is a lieutenant mob again, a mini boss here, and she has a big party hit in Inundate. There's a 40 yard AoE that deals frost damage. Pretty nasty here, but luckily there's nothing else to really combo with it by the time you get to her, so it's not too scary on its own. On top of this, she has a magic absorb she'll put on herself in Aqueous Barrier, so you can purge this off if you miss the kick, but it is interruptible, so try and kick it first. Finally, she has Flash Flood. This is a 12-yard Swirly that deals Frost damage and knocks back any player's hit, so make sure you just step out of this. Once you get through the Gauntlet, the Primal Tsunami will be waiting for you, stationary in the middle of the room, and like all stationary bosses, if it has no one to hit, it's bad news, as it'll use Undertow to constantly pulse for Frost damage to all players. Here's another party hit as well in Tempest Fury. This is just a single large Frost hit to all players. Outside of this direct damage, the boss will also spawn infused globules throughout the arena, which are orbs that do move slightly and will waterlog players that they come into contact with, dealing a big hit of frost damage and applying a 33% magic slow for 5 seconds, so you definitely want to avoid these. Note these globules explode both when they spawn and then again after 11 seconds, so make sure to avoid those ground effects as well. In addition to these orbs, the boss also has a tank combo, first dealing a big frost hit and knocking the tank away with Squall Buffet, then channeling ticking frost damage every second for 5 seconds into them with Focus Deluge. So be aware, this is a significant magic damage intake part of the fight. Make sure you don't also get knocked into any of those globules, that would be bad. When the boss reaches full energy, the intermission will start, which separates players between one of three potential side walkways, forcing them to run through a gauntlet of both the globules we previously mentioned, as well as the crashing tsunami waves that happened back when you were entering the gauntlet before the trash before this boss. Once you make it back to the boss arena, you'll see four infuser mobs that are just channeling infuse into where the boss would be, and this increases the tsunami's damage by 1% per every 5 seconds they've been channeling, so you want to get back here ASAP and interrupt them as quickly as possible to reduce this damage amp. Note that when they're not channeling though, they will attempt to cast that inundate frost AoE that the mini boss before had, but luckily these mobs are not lieutenant mobs, so you can use a CC to stop these casts from going off. Once you kill all four infusers, the boss reforms in the center of the room, getting whatever damage buff was infused into him, and the fight just repeats from here. That wraps up the ability section of the video, so let's hop into a simple, easy-to-execute, pug-friendly route for you to use at the start of the season. Again, not going to be the most optimal, best possible route available, but it's something that doesn't have any massive pulls or skips, so it should be accessible to players of all skill levels. Here off the top, uh, you're just running down the middle here. These mobs will not aggro if you run down the middle, similar to like Upper Karazhan is the example uh, I like to use, uh, if you guys remember that dungeon. Uh, so you can run right down the middle here, not aggro each, and just drag these guys into the first pull, which is one of the more dangerous pulls. There's a few one-time kicks and stops in this pull with the double defender, double apparatuses. So be aware of those. Uh, but just any kick, any AoE stop, anything like that should be able to get most, if not all of them. And note that this first trash is definitely the most dangerous trash uh, in the dungeon, in my opinion. Just the number of kick slash stops you need to get. Luckily though, again, they are combination kick stops, so it makes it a little easier. But just be aware of that. This is probably where a lot of bugs are going to struggle. Uh, so take it slow if you need to. Uh, again, going along this left side, this one here is where the engineering cheat death is. Obviously over here, these tunnels are where the actual shortcuts are uh but you know we're gonna ignore those moving here towards the very first boss couple pulls couple pulls uh you've got watch iridius i recommend here going i guess this is the right path when you're looking at it this is the left path there are some of the mushrooms you can interact with if you're an herbalist over this way if you really are down horrendous for a poison dispel uh, but at least initially i think going this way is better for now Moving all the way down, uh, as you move down with this pack, there's a stealth guy here, uh, there's a stealth guy in this pack down here, and there is a stealth guy in pull 7 as well, so be aware, uh, try and knock them out of stealth 
if you can, uh, just because you don't want your tank getting stunned for three seconds as he's walking into a pull. So it can be a little dangerous. Uh, but for pull nine, uh, you'll just move these guys slowly down the ramp here. They'll probably be mostly dead or fully dead by the time you even get to this bottom pole. So that's why it's it's kind of one pole because you're training, but it's also, you know, you might not be one pole because you kill it all before you get there. Either way, you get their double mini bosses right here. You fight them at the same time. And then you move into the frog and then you're moving across this hallway to the next boss. There are more mushrooms in this area, though at this point, I don't think they're very useful. I'm pretty sure it's just really useful for the frog area and earlier. Uh, but then again, the goal here, one dragon per pull. Dragon's very dangerous. We found like one really weird, probably not usable in a pug group LOS spot for the proto dragons in this hallway but otherwise there's not a lot of real los spots all the rocks are fake so just be aware of that you kind of have to eat the proto dragon hits in this area but again one proto dragon per pull so it's not giga dangerous going here going here and then you've got the third boss and then you've got the gauntlet here so these aqua raiders are constantly shooting in this entire area they get one pack at a time here. These mobs will chain reset if you try and pull them back to the entrance here. So you can't do that. You just run up to the top here uh, and, and pull these mobs on the little circles that spawn. Those circles are LOS. So the Proto Drake here, you can use those little circles in the middle of this gauntlet to LOS their cast and not take any of their damage. Pretty useful, uh, especially if you want to end up pulling this guy with like maybe these mobs up here. But again, I have them separate, but something you can do. There's a Gale Singer in here. Very annoying. They spawn that thunderstorm I was talking about. And usually people are kind of stacked up near the circle. So you can drop a big thunderstorm on you. A little annoying, so be aware of that. And then you've got the mini boss uh, Infuser Soraya into the final boss after that. But there we have it, guys. That's my eighth and final Mythic Plus guide for Season 2. Hopefully this helped you out. And if it did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it, including advanced routing guides for high keys, raid boss guides, much more. If you have any questions about this dungeon, please do drop those down in the comments below. Or you can always ask me over on my Twitch channel at Tactics, where I stream high Mythic Plus keys and Mythic rating from a tank POV. Always happy to help out there. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Couldn't do any of this without you. Otherwise, thanks everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.